Hey everyone, I'm back out in the garage today, but I got to stop working on the Jeep for a minute because my diesel heater broke down. That's why I got a little extra layers on because the heat is off. We're going to try to figure out why. I have a code E08 and E10. Both of them are fuel related. So I've ordered a fuel line kit off Amazon. I'll put the link in the description. Comes with hose, an inline filter, some clamps. Uh, the pumps sounds like it's still working, so I didn't order a pump, but I got to get the uh, the heater disassembled, and uh, we're going to get it up on the workbench and see if we can't uh, run some new fuel line and see if we can't figure out this problem. All right, so the other night, the heater's chugging along, working perfectly. I'm out here doing my work, minding my own business, and all of a sudden, the flame just cuts out. I get an error code of 08. And, uh, error code of 10. Good. When I originally put this in service, uh, a lot of people commented on upgrading the fuel line. Uh, I didn't have any fuel line at the time, um, so I didn't do it, but I did buy the kit, um, and I think I'm going to try to upgrade that right now. Alright, the first thing I'm noticing is I just went to straighten out the flex pipe for the exhaust and it's brittle and I was able to break it just by trying to bend it and I noticed that there's a lot of uh, a lot of soot in here we'll get started taking it apart first thing we got to do is get the diesel fuel out of here one issue that I'm noticing right now while I'm draining the fuel out of here I'm gonna try to get it to duplicate for you again the stream and again if you can't see it I apologize the stream the stream of diesel coming out of this tank watch that it's almost at a stop when I loosen the cap Got a nice solid stream of diesel flowing now. So that tells me that I got an air problem. So the vent, the vent in this cap is likely not uh, venting properly. All right, got the tank drained out. I uh, got that set off to the side. We'll set the pump off to the side. Go ahead and take a look at this thing. Let me get this fuel line out of here first. Try not to make a mess. Okay, here's underneath the unit. Um, this hose looks like it's in good shape too. But this one I can pull off fairly easily. So. We're going to replace that one anyway. All right, here's the kit that I got from Amazon. Uh, it comes with some hoses, an inline filter, which we didn't have, so this is this is an upgrade. So I got some nice nylon hose, some rubber hoses to join everything together, some clamps, and fuel filter. The fuel filter. It's got a wire screen in it, so it's not a paper filter. That looks good. Go ahead and get started here. Uh, this nylon hose. We'll start down at the bottom. We'll work our way back up to the pump. Looks like it's all one piece. So it should be pretty, pretty simple. The more I'm looking at this though, the more I'm thinking that this is probably going to be a situation where the fuel system was airbound because of the way that the fuel was draining or not draining when I was dumping it out there. So I'd be surprised if it's anything but that. But this is a good upgrade. So um, probably should have checked that other 
I really should have checked that fuel cap first, but I didn't. This just slides right on here like that. You gotta make sure you put your clamps on. You got a clamp all the way in the back. And then we got this clamp up here. And then this hose here. Alright, I like to use a ratchet on these so I know that I get them tight. Alright, so I got the I got the new uh, the new fuel line ran. It comes out of the out of the bottom of the unit. Um, comes up, goes around the uh, heater itself. Comes out, goes into the um, fuel pump. We got clamps all around at all the correct spots. Um, comes out of the fuel pump. Goes into this uh, inline filter. I'm trying to get this all to fit in here. We got two clamps that go on, and then uh, we got to get all this to fit in there, and then put the cover back on. All right, I got all new fuel line run, and I have an inline uh, filter now. All of this is new, all of this is an improvement, but I don't think any of it was is my problem. Like I said, when I was emptying this tank, um, I noticed that the diesel fuel was coming out very slow, um, like it wasn't, the cap wasn't venting, so I think I have a bad, <clears throat> a bad cap, and I took the, the little dinkus out of the center of it. So now we, no excuses, we have a good vent. Uh, the other issue that I think we have, the other issue that I think we have is this exhaust. <clears throat> so I think what the issue is, right there is the thimble that goes through the wall. You can see it comes in and then it angles down. <clears throat> My heater generally sits here and the exhaust pipe goes over and then up. And what I'm being told is moisture settles in that low area, obviously. I never even really gave that a thought. But what's happening is the moisture settles in there and then the carbon sticks to the moisture. The pipe is junk now, so I ordered a new one. It'll be here in a day or two. But I'm going to revamp this whole setup. I'm going to turn that so that it goes up. And then I'm going to move this little cabinet here. I'm going to build a stand and put this up higher so that the exhaust goes straight down. But right now, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and put the, put the diesel fuel back in and try to get this thing primed. All right, I've never really primed this before. I, when I first started, I just put diesel fuel in, hit on, and it turned on. But supposedly if you push two buttons on the control panel, it'll prime itself. The down arrow and the OK button. Got the fuel line all primed up. That worked perfectly. Um, got some fuel in the filter there. And uh, no leaks that I can see. Because I don't have an exhaust, I can't run it in the garage now. So I'm going to just bring it out here and let it sit in the driveway for a minute. See if it goes through its startup cycle and see, uh, see if it runs. All right, unit 
is on starting to get a little smoke out of the exhaust so that means the uh, glow plugs are coming on I'm going to go ahead and close the garage door because I have a feeling we're going to create a lot of smoke. Alright, you can probably hear it. Fuel pump's running. We're getting some smoke. It smells like, um, it smells like an oil burner right now that uh, run a little rich. Obviously diesel, number two fuel, one and the same. We're pretty close anyway. We got the burners trying to ignite right now. Okay, the control panel, I know you can't see it, but it says the glow plugs are going, fuel pump is going, and it's warming up. Alright, looks like we have ignition. Sounds like we have ignition. All right, I don't think it's gonna. I don't think it's gonna work because uh, what was once looking promising, not so much. Still don't have an error code though. All right, fuel pump just kicked down again. Looks like it's going to go through this process one more time. Fuel pump is on, glow plugs are on. Okay, first uh, attempt to refire this. Total failure. Um, it acts like it wants to fire. Right now, I'm only getting I'm only getting an E10 code right now. So, with all the carbon that came out of that exhaust, I'm going to have to get into this a little bit deeper. All right, I kind of got ahead of myself here a little bit in. Uh, I got this all separated and uh, there's a bunch of carbon right inside the exhaust and uh, I'm guessing this is part of the reason why it won't fire.
Yep, a lot of carbon in there. I'm not really sure why. But. All right, I'd have to say we got ourselves a carbon problem, and I'm not sure why. Come on. All right, I have, I have a huge carbon problem. And it, and that includes in there too. So <laughs> I guess I know what I need to do. We'll get it cleaned up. got everything looking pretty good I cleaned it out vacuumed it out hit it with a wire brush and so on uh, I've got that looking pretty good um, I got the tube here all cleaned up um, cleaned it up on the inside this was all plugged up the gasket was broken though um, so I just put some permatex uh, on there gasket maker um, that's all I had so hopefully that's good enough this one up here this gasket right here um, that was also broken um, when I took it off there's the other half so I'm gonna have to do something there as well I don't think these gaskets are critical but I could be wrong um, so now that I've got everything cleaned up I'm going to go ahead and try to get this put back together.
really don't know how we fit all that stuff in there but so I'm not sure if I did any of that correct <clears throat> but I just took it all apart I cleaned out all of the uh, soot and then uh, I think I put it back together <laughs> I don't have any extra parts and uh, I got power to it the light the control panel is on so I guess what we'll do is we'll see if it'll fire all right we're back outside I decided I'd give it a go tonight okay we just hit the on button and uh, we're starting it up we're getting a little bit of smoke out of the exhaust it's not nearly as uh, grayish or white smoke as it was before the fuel pump just kicked on All right, it's been about a minute or two. It's ramped up uh, fans on high, pumps pumping fast. The exhaust is clear, no uh, no smoke whatsoever, and it's looking good. So, next couple minutes, we'll tell the tale. All right, we're getting some heat. Getting some pretty good heat now. This shows that it's up to temperature. Alright, it's getting to the point now where I can't hold my hand. It's gonna be it's gonna be sooner. I won't be able to hold my hand here. is ripping now. That's about as close as I can put my hand to it. Right about right there. That thing is everything's on high. And you can see the exhaust down there. The exhaust is perfectly clear. No odor whatsoever. And uh I think we're in good shape. Alright, we'll go ahead and shut it off, let it cool down. and. Alright, well tonight was not how I was uh, expecting to spend the night. Um, but, I got that heater cleaned out and it's running perfectly not sure i had a fuel problem if i did i think it was a venting problem with the cap um, but we upgraded the fuel line we put an inline filter in um, and we got the unit cleaned out it runs as just as good now as it did the day it was new um, which was not that long ago so i think my exhaust is what caused that problem um, i had the exhaust that comes down, I showed you where it goes through the wall. So it comes out of the heater, kind of goes dips down a little bit, and then goes up and out of the wall. Um, so I think that might be the problem. Um, so I'm going to, tomorrow we're going to raise that heater up. We're going to mount it on the wall, and the exhaust is going to go right from the heater, right straight down, and then right directly outside. Um, and... That should keep any moisture in there, um, or that should keep any moisture from getting in there. And uh, hopefully I won't have this problem again. But I always run it on high. Uh, very few times that I turn it down um, since I've owned it. It's always been on high. And I always run diesel fuel right out of the pump. So it's not like I'm burning waste oil or anything like that in there. So I'm a little bit surprised at where the carbon came from or where all that soot came from and I'm thinking it's got to be the exhaust that's really the only thing that it could be um, so we're gonna make a modify we're gonna modify that so that uh, hopefully that won't happen again so um, can't do anything else tonight so uh, we'll wait till morning and we'll get back at it
it's the next morning and uh, I just went to the hardware store and got a couple brackets and uh, let me show you what I'm working on right now all right let me show you what's going on outside I just spun the thimble so the elbow was facing up but if you look at this I think the water ran down right finds its way right into here I'm thinking maybe and then combined with the sag in my pipe was making this was filling that uh, exhaust pipe up with moisture which was uh, plugging up my exhaust at least that's my theory now what I've done I have the heater mounted on these two brackets on the wall it's about 24 inches off the floor I've changed that elbow so that it faces up and now what I'll have is my exhaust will come from here it'll go straight down and any moisture should be able to run right outside so overall this will be a big improvement fuel line upgrade exhaust upgrade I guess we'll see if it works better so as soon as the exhaust hose gets here we'll get it hooked up we'll get it fired up and see what uh, see what we got that's it. all right while I'm waiting for the uh, while I'm waiting for that uh, exhaust pipe I think I'm gonna custom fabricate a shield for outside uh, where the exhaust comes out of the wall it'll be a very detailed and um, well-designed shield to keep the water from coming in. I got this piece of aluminum. Let's see what happens here. All right, <clears throat> after extensive design and engineering, I got my little rain deflector made. I'm gonna go get it installed. All right, what do you think? That should do the trick. All right, I've been working out in the garage a little bit uh, today. Uh, my exhaust pipe showed up and I finally got the heater installed. And here's what it looks like. So we've got the unit mounted on uh, some wall brackets, some heavy duty wall brackets. The exhaust pipe runs down and then out uh, of the garage. And uh, I think overall it's a huge improvement. So out of tragedy <laughs> uh, comes uh, two improvements, one in the fuel system with the new fuel hose, and now we have a more permanent and less temporary installation. So um, lesson learned on my part, and um, just wanted to share with you guys that uh, this is what happened with my diesel heater, and that's it for now, so thanks for watching.